Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I'm going to be making a beer soap. <laughs> I've made beer soaps before and I love them. The lather on a beer soap I think is awesome. Something about the alcohols um, and the sugars and the alcohol and the hops. I think it makes a great bubbly bar of soap. So for my beer today, uh, since I live in Dixon, Tennessee, and that's a little suburb, it's outside of Nashville, but in the surrounding Nashville area, I'm going to be using this beer from the Nashville Brewing Company today in my soap. Um, and I will show you how I prep this. Now, um, some people don't prep their beers. If you do a kind of like how I do the milk and oil method where you do a water discount in your lye solution and you mix the beer into your oils, you can, uh, you can do that without having to fuss with your beer too much. You can pour it in there. Um, you know, it's debatable, but I like to make my lye solution with my beer. So I am going to open this up, pour it in my saucepan and let it go flat and simmer it down a little and get some of the alcohol off. Then I'm going to chill it really good and add my lye very slowly. The reason I do that is I want my volume of beer to be higher. If I was doing like the milk and oil method, I would only be able to use about half this beer and I want to use a lot of beer in this soap because I want all that beeriness <laughs> in there. I think they're great. So for the fragrance on this, I want this to be sort of a, you know, masculine bar, which I will use, <laughs> but I'm going to be using Ambered Tobacco Leaf from Nature's Garden, and this smells so good. I definitely can pick up a tobacco, but not like a smoky. It's just, I don't know, it's kind of like a jazzy club sort of a scent. I think this is fine and really, really masculine, and I thought it went with a beer soap theme. Um, I also have this beer powder. And I have it, and um, I'm going to use it in other applications, but I fi figured I'd throw a teaspoon or a tablespoon of this in there, too, just because I have it. It's just dehydrated beer powder. Uh, and so, for the color swirl, this fragrance says that it doesn't cause uh, acceleration, discoloration, separation. It says that it behaves the reviews on it. I've not used it before, so we'll give it a run. Um, but I will uh, separate off a little bit of soap for a swirl because I love my swirls. Uh, and I will color that swirl with this. It's called Blushed Bronze Mica from Wholesale Supplies Plus. And I just thought it sort of had like that amber tone to it. It does have a lot of shimmer to it. Um, so I thought that would make a really pretty swirl in this beer bar. So I'm going to get my beer prepped and get everything pulled together, get my hair pulled back, safety gear on. Let's come back and make some beer soap. And if you've been enjoying my videos, please consider hitting the like button and subscribe and the bell for notifications. All right, I've got all my oils and butters melted, cooled, and I'm ready to add my dry additives to my oils. I have my beer solution off to the side cooling off, and I'll talk you through that after I get these blended in. So here is my beer powder. Uh, I'm just going to add, this is just a teaspoon, so I'll put maybe a couple of couple of rounded teaspoons in here just to amp up the beer and it smells beery <laughs> beery is that a word it smells it smells like beer <laughs> so got that in there and it's a nice very fine powder so here is my colloidal oats and I thought that goes great because I love an oatmeal stout beer even though the beer I'm using today is not an oatmeal stout but I thought the oats went really well and here is my kale and clay which I just like how that makes the lather feel. So let me get the dry ingredients all blended in here and let them you know, absorb in, and then we'll get moving forward with our beer and lye solution. Okay, it's been a good couple of minutes. All the additives are fully absorbed in here. And let me tell you about my beer solution. What I did was I poured my beer in a little saucepan and just simmered it up and let the, you know, head of the beer kind of dissipate off and boiled off some of the alcohol. Um, and I know some people do soap with beer just straight out of the can, and that is cool for them. This is the way I like to do it because I like a lot of beer. This is pretty much all beer and a couple of ice cubes to get it cold. But um, so I like a really strong beer lye solution. So this is how I do it. And that way, um, 
After I got the beer prepped, I did go ahead and add two tablespoons of cane sugar in here because I really want the lather. Uh, this does have Tussa silk fibers and sodium lactate. So that's what's going on in here. Um, but I just want to be mindful. So the beer has sugars, just natural sugars in it. And then the beer powder has natural sugars in it. Plus I put sugar in here. So after I get this molded, I will put the little wood lid on my mold, but I won't put a blanket over it. And I'm gonna keep an eye on this to make sure I don't overheat and get the top to crack and everything. So I'll just be mindful of that. I want it to go through gel phase, but I don't want it to get too hot. So that's just something to keep in mind. All right, so let's get this wonderful solution in here. And um, I will be, you know, stick blending just sparingly until I get emulsion and get it split off for colors. Because of the sugars, things, things can heat up, you know, with the lye reaction. So it's just something to be mindful of when you're working with things that have a lot of natural sugars in it. That would, uh, that would go for a few, sorry, fruit purees, wines, anything that's going to have a natural sugar. You'll see it start to caramelize. And that beer did have a beautiful sort of caramely amber color to it, which I think, you know, goes with beer. So just a little pulse here, and then we'll get split off, and then I'll get the fragrance in there and the color. I want to do an in-the-pot swirl. Um, not going for anything too swirly and fancy, because this is sort of a dude soap, kind of masculine. So, all right, we've got emulsion, and I'm going to go ahead and pour off for that awesome blush mica color, which I think is fabulous. There we go.
right, it's the next day and I am anxious to get in here. I did kind of a different pour on this and I'm anxious to get in and see how it's looking. I did come in earlier this morning and steam the top so it's got that glossiness to it. I'm a little disappointed in how the color migrated. It has more of a peachy tone so I'm hoping when I get in there um, I'll be happier with the color. I mean, I think it's still really, really nice, but um, I was hoping for it to be a little more amber and a little less peachy, but I still think it's beautiful. So let's get in here. All right, I cannot wait to get in here because look at that when I split the loaf. So I know the pour going this way is really cool looking. So we'll see what it looks like, you know, going this direction. If not, I may just turn it, do that pour again the other way because those side cuts are amazing. So here's my little end piece that goes in a sample pack. And I am loving the inside of the color here. Um, I do I do think it's gonna be fine, this uh, color. I was just hoping for a little more of an amber hue to it, but um, yeah, I think it's gonna be great. Let's take a look. Oh, wow. So it is more um, stripey and less swirly. Well, that's the end piece, but let's keep going and see how this pans out in the middle. That's interesting. I like it. It's very sort of random, but that side swirl is amazing. And the fragrance today smells really, really nice. Um, it is very, yeah, just, I don't know, jazz club, tavern, sort of. That's what it evokes for me when I smell it. I think that's a really cool pour. I'm happy with that. So after I got it in the mold yesterday, um, and I just kept checking on it, it did heat up very nicely. This did go through gel phase, but it didn't overheat. So I was able to keep the lid on it, and uh, I didn't have to put it in the refrigerator or anything. So I didn't have an, any overheating issues, even with the beer and the sugar and stuff. So I was very happy about that. I've only had that happen a couple of times, and the times when it did happen, it actually took me by surprise. Um, I usually, after I mold my soaps, I will come and check on them about an hour, you know, several hours later, just to see how things are going. Oh, that's cool. Um, and I have had a couple overheat, and they literally, it like mounds up and it'll crack the top of your soap if it gets too hot. doesn't hurt the soap at all, but, you know, when you take the time to make the tops on it pretty and then it cracks, that's a little bit of a bugger, but it's not, it doesn't affect the soap. It's just an aesthetic thing. But I do like my gel phase, so there's a balance. All right, this is the center loaf of that triple loaf, and that is more what I was thinking of. That's cool. Yeah, it's interesting when you're pouring and you have the two side loaves, um, to get the colors to go all the way to the edges can be a bit of a trick. So, and I, you know, it, that's one of the neat things about soap is that, you know, no two bars are alike. But that's, that's pretty cool. All right, so I will just show you how I bevel and stamp my soaps. Every once in a while, I like to include that uh, if you're joining me for the first time. So this is a KitchenAid vegetable peeler and I've been using this for years. It's just nice and sturdy, and for me, it just makes a very nice, smooth, beveled edge. 
Uh, this is the next day. I poured this soap yesterday and it's been a little more than 24 hours. I cut it this morning and let it sit for a few hours so the surface area is dried a little and then I come in and I bevel and just it just feels nice in your hand to not have those sharp edges. So I bevel the edges and then I pick a side for my because I like to do a side stamp on my soaps. You can stamp wherever you want but um, then I spritz my stamp with isopropyl alcohol and center it up. Sometimes they get a little crooked if I'm not paying attention, but center it up and give it a nice big whack and rock it out. And that is how I bevel and stamp and finish my soaps. And this bar is all ready to go on the curing rack and they will cure for four to six weeks and I'll wrap them and sell them. <laughs> And then this big bucket of shavings, I have several different options to do with this bucket. Um, you can rebatch it, which I have several videos on that, rebatching all this into new bars of soap, melt it down. You can make confetti soap with it. Um, I've seen people take little uh, cotton soap pouches and pack it full of shavings and bring it in the shower. So you've got a lot of options. This does not go to waste.